Here is the news. No. I've got an announcement to make first. Really? Yes. Um, last week, in a bid to show that Britain is not too crowded to have fun in a nice car, I took a Ferrari to this road, OK, and I said that even though this was just 40 miles from London, in Hertfordshire, <laughs> <laughs> there was no traffic at all and you could still enjoy it in the Ferrari that I was using. Well, we have been inundated with complaints, and I do mean inundated. No, there have been a lot. A lot, and people were absolutely furious. How dare the BBC say this is Hertfordshire? It plainly isn't. Well, you're right. I admit it and I apologise. That is not Hertfordshire. It's Buckinghamshire, actually. Was... <laughs> Nevertheless, well spotted all of you for yeah. seeing that. You were on the ball there. Now, Ford has obviously decided that uh, the problem with modern cars is they don't have enough radiator grills. So this is their new one. This is the EcoSport. Wow! And it has one, two, three, four, five radiator grills. Now, so you've got a one-litre engine. It's going to be under there. It's going to need a blanket because it's a bit drafty. He's shivering in a corner. Oh, oh cool. No, that... That massive car hasn't got a one litre house. No, it's not massive. It looks it, but it's, it's basically a Fiesta on stilts. It's actually a small <laughs> car. With a no, can I just say, engine. the thing that baffles me most about this car, and I'm going to quote for you here, OK? It says, as a first in Europe, the Ford Sync app link system will offer drivers voice control of mobile apps on the move, including the music streaming service Spotify. Now, does anyone here have the first idea what any of that means? <laughs> Does anyone really? What is it? Spotify. What is Spotify? Spotify is a music streaming service, so you can listen to music over the internet. Well, any music? Any music. So if I were just driving along and I said, Roxanne, it would play Roxanne? Maybe. No, no. Well, hang on, that's not going to work. Because we know that voice recognition in cars is rubbish. It never works, does it? <laughs> so if you just say, the police, it'll probably actually <laughs> ring the police. <laughs> Wow. No, it will. It will, it will, it will, because this car's got a feature on it that if you have an accident or get into problems, it calls the emergency services for you. Oh, well, that's just a recipe for disaster. Because yeah, no, you'd be sitting there and go, work. right, get the fire brigade, and it would play the move. Get the fire brigade, get the fire brigade. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm in trouble. Help! I need some money. <laughs> What's a terrible way to die, trapped in your car, listening to all the embarrassing rubbish on your iPod? <laughs> Anyway, so that won't work. Yes, let's move no. on. Can I let you into a little secret? Or is it time? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think after 22... <laughs> no, can I let you into a little secret? You know those um, gantries over the motorway? They've got them on the M25 and on the M1, mm. OK? Now, the idea is they've got speed limits on them, so you can temporarily lower the speed limit to warn drivers of, a, of an accident or congestion ahead. And then there are speed cameras on the back of the gantries to make sure that people do actually slow down. Well, now, here's my secret. It turns out the police can turn those cameras on at any time they like. Really? Which means the chief constable sitting there at his desk thinks, I fancy a new car. <laughs> Pop the cameras on, and after, well, I was going to say half an hour, but probably ten seconds, he's got enough for a supercharged Jag. <laughs> we should point out, for reasons of uh, BBC impartiality, that other luxury cars are available to bent... <laughs> to bent chiefs of policemen. The only thing I don't like about it is the name, ST. And why have they named it after a lady towel? <laughs> Now, the news, and the news is, you may have read about this recently, there are plans to open pubs in motorway service stations. I don't get that. I don't get it either, because, as it's on a motorway, you're bound to be driving, mm -hmm. which means you can only have one drink, and when it comes to drink, one is impossible. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> is it being too many? Yeah. <laughs> what if... What if you're the passenger? Oh, I see, James. So I'm driving you, mm -hmm. and as I fill up with petrol, you say, I'm going to go and get a gin and tonic. Yes. <laughs> well, if you do that, you may as well prepare a sign that says, Hammersmith on a bit of card. Because <laughs> when you come out, I'll have gone. Hey, now, we've got some important consumer news for everybody. Uh, when you go into a car showroom now, the salesman will try to sell you lots of electronic bits and bobs for your car. Here's our top gear, top tip. Don't bother with any of them. 
because they don't work, any of them. Bluetooth. Bluetooth. That, Bluetooth never works. It doesn't. Does it? Hammond uses it and it's like he's sitting at the bottom of a river. <laughs> yeah, well, to be fair, sometimes I am. <laughs> shall I tell you, shall I tell you the thing that doesn't work most of all? Voice activation. Oh, that's just oh, a shouting yeah. match. With no, because you're driving along, don't have to take your hands off the wheel, you go, call Richard Hammond. Collapsing suspension. It does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, it's misunderstood me. Call Richard Hammond. Deflating tyres. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Reinflate tyres. Reinflate tyres. Calling Richard Hammond. <laughs> <laughs> it just, the problem is, is that... In the olden days, or when it first came out, voice activation was just for the radio or for the satellite navigation, something similar. Now it's for every single feature on the car and in your life, and it has to understand every accent in all of Britain. So it's, eh, 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 or rock either do, and it's just, <laughs> all right, pet. And it's, it's just, it just can't cope. So you're just driving like your radio two. Accessing bank accounts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! Transferring funds. God, no, don't! <laughs>as we know, often issues commemorative stamps, you know, they pick on a subject like woodpeckers or hats or diseases. Diseases? <laughs> anyway, they've decided to do a range of stamps based on classic British motoring cars. And I've got some of the ones they've done for you here. There's the Lotus Esprit. This isn't the actual size of the stamp, by the oh, way. Oh, I did wonder. Clear. <laughs> this is a mock-up. I see. But anyway, they've got the Lotus Esprit and they've got the um, Aston Martin DB5. And if you don't want your letter to get there... The MG. <laughs> oh, God, look at that dismal little... Oh. Oh. <laughs> Ford Anglia police car. Now, that, yeah, that is a Ford Anglia. That is the scariest thing I've ever done in however many years I've been testing cars. 25 years? 80. Ago? Yeah, 80 years. <laughs> 80 years was doing an emergency stop once in one of those. Just put, my dad lost his kneecaps in one of those. I don't mean lost them, like, oh, where are they? They're under the seat. I was going to say, they'll be under the seat. <laughs> no, no, he crashed it, and then they had to take his kneecaps out after crashing in Ford Anglia. And now they put it on a stamp. Yeah, and, and that is just, that's more dreadful heritage Britain nonsense, isn't it? Oh, that's God, cool. no, it gets worse. Look at oh. that one. <laughs> That is the archers as a postage stamp. Why don't they put something modern on it? You could put the McLaren on it, you could put the Bentley Mulsanne on it. That would yeah. be fantastic on a stamp. I mean, the French wouldn't do a stamp that had an old bloke on a bicycle and a stripy T-shirt with some onions for sale. <laughs> That's what that is. The Germans wouldn't do a stamp with a half-track just outside Warsaw. No, exactly. <laughs> no, they really wouldn't. No, Joby, they definitely, definitely... No, they wouldn't do that. No, they wouldn't, would they? now time to do the news. Yes, and we begin with the government's attitude to speed limits. Uh, you did that last week. I did it last week and the week before and the week before that and every single week the producers have edited it out. Yeah, they have. But this week I have a cunning plan to make sure it stays in. Do you? Yes, I do. Bear with me. Okay, you know, earlier on this year the government said they were thinking of upping the motorway speed limit to 80 miles an hour, yes? Well, the new Transport Minister, Patrick McLaughlin, recently announced that's not going to happen. Oh. Yeah, I... Which is a blessed relief. What? Why? Because, if you think about it, OK, if he'd upped the speed limit to 80, he would, to keep the Daily Mail happy and all of the road safety charities, he would have had to say, right, we're having more police patrols, more speed cameras, more drones with more Hellfire missiles to make sure people stick to 80, which is 15 miles an hour slower than we all drive now. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. People on the motorway drive at 95 miles per hour. Mm. And yet, I think I'm right in saying that British motorways are the safest roads in Europe statistically. They are, are they? indeed. They are indeed. Now, I did an experiment to prove my 95 mile an hour point this morning. I drove down the motorway here, OK? At exactly 70. Well, don't you always drive down the motorway at exactly <laughs> 70. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, I do. Yes. Yes, yeah. I do. No, I don't. No. I usually drive slower than that. Do you? Mm, but for my experiment, I sped up to 70. Okay? Drove for 15 miles at 70, 
Guess how many cars overtook me? Well, I'm guessing quite a few. 103. That was all of them. All of them, exactly. So, thank you very much, Mr McLaughlin, for uh, maintaining the 70 mile an hour speed limit, because that means we can all carry on doing 95. And that's the end of the news. What? Is it? Can't edit that out, can they? Oh, I see what you did. It's the only thing in it. <laughs> yeah, that oh, works. Yeah. It's got to go in. It's good. Well done. Good news, ladies and gentlemen. Dacia has announced a special limited edition black version of the Duster. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, hang on a minute. Black like a... I mean, I normally go great and then move on, but that's black like a Mercedes 6.2 V8. No. <laughs> it's literally black. That's it. <laughs> I was going to say they've painted it black. Actually, they haven't painted it. They've done a wrap in a, you know, like a bin line. So there's a goes. blue edition and a yellow edition. And a white one, It's just one, yeah. a black. It's just a black. That's yeah. a bit daft. Yeah. Oh, now, can I just say something? Um, as we know, the heat wave ended spectacularly in Britain on uh, Tuesday. Many storms. Got some pictures of the aftermath here. I'm not gloating, but call me Noah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this guy with his BMW, very proud of it. But at that moment, he's thinking, I wish I had that hover van. Yeah. <laughs> Told you. Hey, I've got some serious news. A lot of cars these days have got a sport button on them, OK? The idea is you push it and it makes everything more taut and more racy, OK? But I've long harboured a suspicion that it doesn't actually make the car go any faster. So last week we did a test. We've got a new Golf GTI down here, which incidentally is a brilliant, brilliant car. Extremely good. It's properly yes. good. Anyway, got the Stig, put him in normal mode, sent him around the track and he did a 129.6, OK? We then put it in sport, which beefed up the suspension and the front differential and it made the steering heavier and it quickened the throttle response, okay? In sport, 129.6. What, exactly the same? Exactly the same. <laughs> we then put it in comfort mode, makes everything soft and gooey, 129.5. Fast. <laughs> Faster. <laughs> that is confirmation that the sport button just makes the car more uncomfortable. Yeah, it shouldn't say sport, it should just say worse. Oh. <laughs> I'm not actually that interested in pubs and motorway service stations. What really bothers me is, why do they sell trousers? Because I've never got halfway. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody ever gone halfway through a motorway journey and they thought, I forgot my trousers? <laughs> I'd better get these elasticated beige ones. I don't understand why people even stop to eat at a motorway service station. There is no car journey in Britain that could be so long that you would starve to death before you got <laughs> sick. <laughs> That's my argument with the pub thing, is it's not that far to wait for a drink. Does, you don't think, I'm so desperate, I'm going to pull over and have half a pint of shandy. <laughs> <laughs> I would. Well, that's because you're a raving alcoholic, James. <laughs> Can I move it up? We've got off yes. topic. We yeah, we have a bit. launched a car which parks itself. And I don't mean you sit in it, OK? The idea is you pull up outside your office, get out, go into your office, it goes off, finds a space... <laughs> I'm not making this up, and parks in it. The only problem is, OK, when you come out of your office, how do you know where it's parked? <laughs> but what if it's had to park three streets away? Or what if it's just given up and gone home? Well, it's... <laughs> well, hang on, how does it... How does it know what the rules are? You know those signs that go with single yellow lines and those ones where there are two lines on the curb? They're yeah. complicated. How can... Well, I mean, it's Swedish anyway, so it can't read it. <laughs> what worries me about this is the roads are going to be full of driverless, slightly panicky Volvos scurrying about. No park here! Can I park there? Where can I go? It's going to be terrifying. It's the lamp posts. What? All the lamp posts are going to have missing Volvo pictures on oh. them. <laughs> Tiddles and he went off to find a parking space and I haven't seen him since. <laughs> right, let's move on to proper news, yeah, shall we? Else. Yeah. Oh, now, yes. Bad news. Mr. Cameron has decided there should be a ban on internet pornography. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> that means we will no longer be able to look at pictures like this. Oh, wait a minute, is this wise? <laughs> he hasn't banned it yet. Have a look at this. 
Oh, I see what you mean. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. That is strong oh. pornography. It is. And it's going to get banned. It's actually a, a one-off Lamborghini based on a Gardo. It's called the Selfish. It's not called the Selfish. It is. It's called the Egoista. It's Italian for selfish. Is it? Anyway, you won't be able to see that, and nor will you be able to see this. Well, in what <laughs> way is that pornography? Well, it's orange. What? <laughs> no, the thing is, and this is a true story, OK? A friend of mine has a website, OK? It has an orange backdrop. Now, in various offices and workplaces that have this porn filter on the internet, OK, orange is picked up as a skin tone, which, of course, it is in Cheshire, yeah? <laughs> it's picked up an M, so it will just see that as a naked lady with a sort of vajazzle in the shape of a Renault badge. <laughs> let anyone see it. So Mr Cameron's porn filter is just going to stop us looking at things that are orange? Yeah, David Dickinson's had it. He's gone. <laughs> Listen, I, just, I think it's a bit more sophisticated than that. I think it looks for words and things as well, you know, on search engines. That's so certain word. words? Yeah, obviously. Volvo. Eh? Hey, what? <laughs> well, it's a bit close to... Oh, I see it. <laughs> It's not accurate. What about Fuchs Alloys? No, you never, you never get like you get on the Porsche 911. Fuchs Alloy. Bell Helmet. No. <laughs> oh, look at them. You know, we were doing the Africa Special last year, and I got my BMW stuck on that termite mound thing, and I said, right, James, you reverse onto me, and Hammond tug me off from behind. <laughs> I said that. Yeah. That, that, that won't be showing up. On iPlayer. No, Mr. Cameron, don't ban it. <laughs> Can I move it on now? Yeah. Now, last week I asked if you would send in photographs of Jeremy on his new bicycle. Because, well, I, I didn't expect to get anything because, frankly, I didn't believe he'd bought a bicycle. I have. Well, I have. Do you know, I now believe you. I know you have because somebody has sent in a picture. And here he is, Jeremy, on his bicycle. <laughs> You are losing weight. It's your trimming down. It's, That's it's not working. my bike. I haven't got stabilisers. <laughs> Otherwise, it's pretty accurate. <laughs> to move on. Let's yes. move on. Now, there has been a whole rash of new supercars uh, launched recently. This is the one I'm interested in, this Ferrari. That has... Mm, yeah, indeed. Ooh, it has an 800-horsepower V12. It has a curse system, like a Formula One car. Uh, it's going to cost around a million quid. But I think they've got a bit of a problem with the name, because they've called it La Ferrari. Well, <laughs> sorry, what's wrong with that? I mean, it is. No, but that's the model name. And LaFerrari means the Ferrari, so that's the Ferrari, the Ferrari. <laughs> um, now, Mazda and Alfa Romeo have announced they're going to do a joint project to make a small sports car. Mazda will call theirs the MX-5. Alfa will call theirs the Spider. Sense. Trouble is, Alfa Romeo once did this in the past. They teamed up with Nissan. You remember this? Yes. They teamed up with <laughs> Nissan. And we thought, what a great plan. Alfa does the styling and the engine, and then Nissan builds it. But they did it the other way around. <laughs> yeah, they did. This was That's... the stupidest decision in history. Yeah. This is what we got, ladies and gentlemen. The Arna. <laughs> oh, dear. Styled by Nissan, built by Alfa Romeo. I mean, what, <laughs> what, what, what? Going to Peter Crouch and Abby Clancy and saying, "Right, Abby, you take the penalty, and then Peter, you model the bikini." <laughs> it's that, it's that yeah. idiotic. They couldn't be more wrong. So, for this MX-5 stroke Spider, yeah. Job one, make sure Mazda build it. That's yes. essential. Yes. Mazda do the build. Alfa do the styling. Yes. Engine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Alfa, yeah, Alfa do the engine and the styling, but. Welding, soldering, doing up the bolts. Yes. That's Mazda's Mazda. job. Yes. I really do want to see this Alpha Mazda. That's something I they should be working MX5 on. I think an MX-5 Spider joint venture, that could be brilliant. The supercar I really want is by Pagani. They've got a new car out. Except they sort of haven't because it's yet another version of the Zonda. Their old car, there it is. And what's new about that? Not a lot, really. Apart from the price. It's now £2.3 million. Pounds. What? Yeah, right, it's going to be Two put, What, for a second-hand car? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what it is. Yeah. Now, there's a new supercar. It's called the uh, Icona Volcano. Here it is. Look, Jeremy, did wow. you do that publicity photo? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I call oh, a publicity fire. shot. I love that very much. Not sure about the car, though. Uh, they say it has a V12 hybrid, um, but they won't tell us where the V12's from or how the hybrid system works. All they will say is it develops 950 horsepower 
and will go 217 miles an hour. Does it? Mm. Mm. Um, no, the reason I brought this car up is their chief design director. His name is Samuel Chuffart. Give over. <laughs> It's not. His name is I not just. You. It's not. with fond memories of his school days. <laughs> <laughs> Every register, oh no, it's got to Christian, I'm next. Chuff fart. <laughs> I bet the novelty never wore off for him. No, he, apparently he, he worked at Jaguar for a while, not sure what happened there. I think they probably had to let him go. <laughs> <laughs> so now he's ended up in Italy, because that is an Italian firm, they're actually making the, the car in China. Can you imagine what the wiring's going to be like? <laughs> Chef fart in Italian probably means hat penis anyway. Or something like that. <laughs> we actually asked our researchers to call up this company and say, yeah, can you tell us more about the car? And not one of them could get through the beginning bit of the phone call without bursting. <laughs> you put the receptionist on the other end, must be used to it, the phone ringing, and there's someone laughing, yeah, I'll put you through. Chef <laughs> fart. He probably just answers the phone with the words, yes, that is my name. <laughs> <laughs> Let's clear the air on that. <laughs> <laughs> That's how that picture came about. Someone lit a match just after <laughs> Chuff Fart. <laughs> Do you know, the one I'm most interested in, and this is the McLaren P1, because this is just shy of a million quid, so it's almost a bargain. Yeah. And it's got a 903 horsepower mm. engine. 903. What fascinates me is there's a wing that comes out of the back of it, which has got DRS on it. You know what DRS is with the... In Formula One, it opens. Now, I'm thinking, if you've got 903 horsepower, when would you ever think, right, I need more straight-line speed, <laughs> I'll deploy the DRS wing? Well, it could happen. Oh, that post office van is getting a shift on. I'll deploy DRS. <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you will need that, your DRS, when you come across me in the Ferrari, the Ferrari. Because, I hadn't read this properly, it has got 800 horsepower in the engine, but, of course, it's got a curse system. When you deploy it and use the electric bit as well, uh -huh. 963 God. horsepower. And is that all going through the rear wheel? Yes, it is. Hang on a minute, that's broadly the same amount of power you get from a Bugatti Veyron, which is yep. almost exactly twice as heavy as the yep. Ferrari, the Ferrari, and it has four-wheel drive. Mm. That's going to be an handful. Yes. It's really quite exciting, though, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I, I, wanna, I wanna go in it. I, want to I go really want to go in it. I really want to go in the McLaren. Thinking that would be an epic test. You in that Ferrari, you in the McLaren, me in that Zonda. Anybody want to see that? I want to do that, I want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, how do I? I want to do that. Let's see if we can put that together. Yeah, I want to do that. But you know people... People often come up to us and say, when will Top Gear end? About, about three minutes after us three have set off. Yeah. The yeah, yeah. In, a, in a big fireball. Yeah. Does anybody want to see that? Yeah. Yeah. Can I talk, please, if you don't mind, about potholes? Out where I live, in Herefordshire, I came to work the other day on my bike, yeah, and I hit a pothole. It was vast! I shot up about 15 feet in the air off the bike. Mm -hmm. By the time I was coming back down, the bike had hit the opposite wall, it bounced up. Net result, as I was coming down, it leapt up and head-butted me in the plums. And it was <laughs> agony! No, that's why I was late to the office, because I had to stop by the side of the road and massage them. <laughs> so let's just get this straight. You were standing by the side of a presumably busy main road, Rubbing your testes. <laughs> in leather trousers, yeah, come to think of it. it if you saw that, that's what was going on. <laughs> yeah. While we're having a moan, I don't like electric boot closing. You know, where you hit the button. With you on that. What's the, what was the matter with slamming a boot lid? Yeah, so instead of doing Who? that, it's just the idea is you press the button and then the boot sets off and you can get in your car. But it's so slow! <laughs> By the time you've got in your car, your dog has seen its opportunity and made a break for freedom. He's in the track. <laughs> Just, or worse, it's going, mm, and then it detects you're shopping in the boot and it thinks that could be a child. Mm. <laughs> you go, oh, look, it's a packet of dog biscuits, it's not a baby. Fire the airbag in three. <laughs> Don't fire the airbag! 
too much responsibility. No, modern cars are deeply irritating because of the electronics. I tell you what, though, Hammond, the pothole is not the problem. It's a pothole that's been repaired by a British worker, Johnny. Look at this, OK? This is... Look at that. <laughs> How can you stand back and go, yes, I've done a good job there? It can't be that difficult for a solution. They need to design, like, a liquid, yeah, that you just pour in to potholes everywhere, and then it sets, so it's self-level, and it would set hard. Why they could you not that, do that? that? It so is a brilliant idea. Thank you, it's mine. So, so there it's, we it's, are. It's, it's available. It is, it's that, my cheese sauce. What? Don't know. <laughs> James, you know I said that we'd got more mature in this series. You've gone straight to dementia. No, 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 no. <laughs> cheese sauce. When, you, when I make cheese sauce, I, I always make too much, like everybody does. So there's like a quarter of an inch in the bottom of the pan. And when you get up the next day, that bit is so hard, you either throw the pan away or you treat that as the new bottom of the pan. <laughs> <laughs> so if you put that in the hole, Jeez, job's so. your uncle. <laughs> well, we solved it. Job done. <laughs> but we always solved the You're pothole glad we're problem. Back. Oh, God. How has the world managed without know. us for the last few uh, months? Yeah, yeah. <laughs>